No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. G'day gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman and as you can tell by my perfectly executed Australian accent, it's another Australian gin special. So let me introduce you to this little beauty which is West Winds Gin. Now this was sent to me by, I'm just gonna drop the accent for a minute, I can't keep it up. This little fellow was sent to me by one of my subscribers and indeed one of my patrons, my very first patron who sends me loads and loads of gin. So thank you very much to Mr. Craig Stowers all the way from Australia. This my friend is for you. Now my regular viewers and subscribers will know of my acute and never-ending love for Australian gin. I don't know what you Aussies are doing to your gin but it is extraordinary. I, I think you must have a few uh, so in, uh, botanicals over there that we don't get anywhere else in the world and they just work perfectly for gin. So I am very excited to try this little for, fellow for, oh god, to try this little fellow for you today. So let's see what they say for themselves, shall we? Now, obviously I shall continue my Australian accent as I always do, but the dilemma here is, do I wear the Australian hat again? Because I did it only, uh, I used it only a couple of weeks ago. Is it a bit too soon? I don't know. So what I shall do is I shall flip a coin on it. So heads, I wear the hat, tails, I don't wear the hat. So here we go. Oops, I've dropped the coin, brilliant. So heads, I wear the hat, tails, I don't. So here we go. Bonza. We named our gin the West Winds as a tribute to the ocean breezes that carried the sailors to the west coast of Australia in their search for the riches of the New World. A strong undercurrent of citrus weaves through 12 Australian and imported botanicals with the exotic lemon myrtle. Oh, I love the lemon myrtle. This, I, this is the one in... Jesus Christ. I'm going to try and keep very still for this bit, but the lemon myrtle, whenever I've tried it in Australian gins, it's been absolutely awesome. I think it may well be the key to why the Australian gins are so awesome, so I can't wait to try that. Exotic lemon myrtle and wattle seed. Ah, now wattle seed. Now wattle seed was in Steve the bartender's gin a few weeks ago. I don't know if you remember, I made an amusing joke about getting whacked in the wattle seeds. Drink it with tonic, loads of ice, fresh lemon, or in your favorite citrus-based gin cocktail. Well, that all sounds bloody good to me, my friends. Let's crack on and get the bugger open, shall we? So then, do we have a cork? It doesn't look like it, I mean, oh, there we go, a bit more grip. No, just the turny thing on the top, the turny thing. You can tell I'm an expert in this. So I'll put the turny thing down there and let's get the old fellow in the glass, shall we? So, oh yes, get in there, old son. So then, let's have a little sniff. Oh! <laughs> it's that all familiar, beautiful scent of the Australian gins. That's just kind of awesome twang. They all seem to have a mixture of kind of, sort of, ah, a depth of citrus that none of the other gins get to, but with a kind of a spiciness in there, a sprinkle of just spark. Ah, oh, it's just great. I, I genuinely love sniffing the Australian gins, but I do not spend all day doing it, as I always say, because it is pretentious. So let's get the old time. I'm almost out of tonic here. I'm gonna have to get some more. So tiny bit in there. That's about sort of one to one ratio, I think. So here we go, my friends. West Winds. Now they have two gins, apparently, all both named after swords. One is called the Cutlass. They're stronger, uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, more kick-ass one. And this one is called the Sabre. So West Winds, the Sabre. I say to you, my friends, cheers. Mm. Oh, <laughs> it's quite strong. Oh, God. What's the strength on that one? I just don't think it's particularly strong. It's only 40% AVB. I think I must have poured it a little bit strong, but wow. Oh, so this is, oh, they're all great, the Australian gins, but they're all great in their own way. This one kind of, you can kind of, this can sound a bit weird, but it's, they said it's inspired by the sea, right? And it kind of tastes like it. Now, straight away, that probably doesn't sound brilliant, but it, let me try and sort of define it a little bit more. They've captured an essence of an almost sort of fresh saltiness. Now, I don't know if that's my sort of imagination. I don't know, but I'm, I don't know whether it's just the bottle, it's kind of put me in the mind of the sea, but to me, there's a, a tiny sort of bite of that. I suppose more, a better way of describing it is a kind of a sort of, the if you ever sort of stood on the seafront and you get like sort of that, that sort of spray, the waves hit the rocks and you get like the spray that comes up and mix with the sea air, you can just be like, 
and you can kind of taste the essence of sea. It, for me, it gives that impression. I can see why they named it after with a sort of a nautical and sort of ocean theme. But on top of that, or sort of underneath that, or mixed in with that, that beautiful sort of sense of lemon myrtle. And what the lemon myrtle does, in my mind anyway, it tends to, rather than just give it a lemon taste, which can be kind of run of the mill these days, let's face it, it gives it sort of a depth, the sort of three-dimensional lemon taste, which almost goes sort of to this kind of a, a sherbety sort of essence to it. And I just think that works so well with gin. I just absolutely love it. Oh, I'd put it in the category of kind of like a core gin, you know, it's not doing anything weird and wonderful. It's like your sort of, your beef eaters, your sip smiths, your tankerays, your brokers, J just the sort of not doing anything crazy and out there uh, because they do do some weird and wonderful flavors I've seen on the website, but this I think is their central product. And, but at the same time, it's got individuality uh, and sort of a uniqueness of character, which makes it stand alone from all the others. And it's not just, you know, sort of just another, just another run of the mill gin. So then, what is this little fellow going to cost you, I hear you ask? Well, in Australia, because it's obviously an Australian gin, it's going to cost you 59 of your finest Australian dollars, which is, and over here in the UK, it's about 37 pounds, which is a little bit more, but as I say, worth paying to support one of the lesser known distilleries. So it's priced about right, I think, and um, especially in Australia, as I know the gins can be very expensive over there, I think that's not bad at all, and definitely, definitely worth getting on the old shelf. So, my Australian friends, if you're looking for a lovely core, no-nonsense gin to get on your shelf, you could do a lot worse than getting this little fellow, my friends. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video and hearing me talk about it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Press the like button uh, if you like that. Well, if you like it, and if you don't like it, just press it anyway. And of course, if you want to support me, head over to my Patreon page as well, the link for which is in the section below. But until next time, gin lovers, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe, thank you to all my patrons and keep drinking the Australian gin. Also, before we go, I'd like to give a huge shout out to my friend, subscriber and patron of the show, Mr. Nicholas Sergi. Now, he actually has his own Instagram page where he uh, reviews Argentinian gins. He's got some great content on there, so I suggest you go over and have a look at it. He's at Dr. Surgin on Instagram, which is Dr. D-R-S-E-R-G-I-N. Head over there to Instagram and check him out.